folks, welcome back to May Kitten Reads and I had a very good reading month in May. This is my May wrap up, um, it's running a little bit late and um, I'm not sure if there's going to be a video next weekend because I am going to be away for the, for a week and a half at a convention, although I will be hopefully filming some at that convention, I just won't be able to upload it and then I'm going to visit my parents and my brother and my nephews for a while. Um, but yeah, this is my May wrap up. Um, I read 10 things. I say 10 things instead of 10 books because some of them are short stories because I've at least started my Hugo Rewards reading. But yes, I read 10 things. Um, so what I started off was finishing Ursula Le K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. I started this at the end of April um, during the Dewey's 24 hour readathon and I finished it up on the 1st of May. So, um, yeah, this is The Left Hand of Darkness. It's one of Le Guin's most favourite book, famous books. It won the Nebula and the Hugo Award in 1970. It's part of her Hainish cycle and it is the first Le Guin I have ever read. I haven't ever even read The Earthsea Chronicles. So, um, yeah, I was really excited to pick up a Le Guin and it was such a fascinating book. I'm pretty sure I probably missed a great deal of the subtleties. But even then, I got so much out of it, so much about discussion about gender and what happens when there is no gender, um, discussion about various different political systems and religion, and oh, it was just fascinating. And so I probably will definitely have to read it again just to try and keep understanding it. But yeah, so this is the story of... Basically, there's an ambassador from the Confederacy of Worlds, or whatever they're called, that is on this new world um, as trying to open the borders, I guess, and get them used to the idea that there are people out there on other worlds. Um, and But it's so... It's, it's, it's humanity. Like, they're technically humans, but they are so different to the humans that we understand as human particularly in terms of gender because they don't have gender they are simply as they are and then they go through mating cycles um, where they can be either gen male or female or both in different cycles so it's yeah it's it's their adventures in politics and in and in interacting with people that you don't understand so that's uh, the left hand of darkness by Ursula Le Guin then I don't have the next two books with me because they were library books that had to go back. But I, of course, read Ms. Marvel Volume 6, which is entitled Civil War 2 um, by G. Willow Wilson. So this is the sixth volume of Ms. Marvel. I didn't like it as much as the other ones, but I didn't expect to because I don't like hero versus hero stories, um, which is what this was. But I definitely came down on Ms. Marvel's side and I really did enjoy the sort of subplot that ran through it which was to do with her heritage as a Pakistani Muslim woman and it went all the way back to when her grandparents were escape were leaving India at, during partition um, and moving to what would now be called Pakistan because they were Muslim and it went through her mother's history and moved them moving to America and then the final issue in the volume was uh, Ms Marvel Kamala Khan herself deciding that she needed to go home and visit her family in Pakistan to try and figure out who she was because the previous volume issues had, had disturbed her so much. So that was, yeah, it was all right. And I enjoyed bits of it, but it wasn't really my kind of story. Um, and then I followed that up with Raven Black by Anne Cleves, which is the first of the Shetland uh, detective novels by Anne Cleves. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. I've seen the TV show. And this was one of the episodes of the TV show. And the plot wise, it was very similar. It was just more detailed, particularly when it came to the motivations and thoughts of the characters. What really threw me was the protagonist, Jimmy Perez, um, who in the book is uh, black haired and Mediterranean looking. And in the TV show is played by Dougie Henshaw, who is red haired and pale and freckled um so that threw me and also his family situation is a great deal different in the book um than in the tv show so i'm not quite sure what the tv show has done there um possibly fridged someone who was actually a main character in the book um 
but yeah, so that was interesting and I, I will definitely, I think, pick up the rest of the series at some point. So after that, I finished off The Starlit Wood, which is an anthology of new fairy tales edited by Dominic Parisian and Nava Wolf. Um, and I really enjoyed this. Um, there were stories in here that I absolutely loved. There were stories in here that I liked. There were stories in here that I recognised were very, very good, but really, really, ugh, didn't like. Um, not so much I didn't like them, I guess, so much, as in they were really disturbing. Particularly, I'm thinking of Catherine Valenti's story, which left me feeling really, really icky. Um, what I did appreciate about the book very much, apart from the fact that it's absolutely gorgeous, is that on the contents page, um, each of the stories has in brackets what's, what fairy tale it's actually retelling. So, you know, for example, a Sean Maguire story was a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. Um, uh, there's one, Hansel and Gretel, and there's all sorts of um, stories that I've actually never heard of. I love Amal El Matar's story, which is in the, on the Hugo ballot. That is absolutely beautiful, Seasons of Glass and Iron. Um, I had read that one before. But the other thing I love is at the end of each story, there's a little blurb by the author of the story um, just explaining why they chose to retell the fairy tale they did and how they chose to do it. And so that was really interesting. So I definitely think this is an anthology I will read again at some stage. And after that, I went into my Hugo reading a bit and read three of the Hugo short stories that I hadn't already read. Um, so the first of those was The City Born Great by N.K. Jemison. Um, it was reasonably enjoyable and it was a bit weird. Um, it was a story about the birth of living cities and at some stage in their history a city would go from merely a city to being a living entity but there was like this evil thing that would try and eat the newly born cities and so it was a process and they cho would choose a person who lived in the city um, to fight for the birthing process which sounds really weird and it was all very metaphysical um, and so this was the birth of New York City kind of thing so it was it was interesting but probably not really my thing and then I had The Game We Played During the War by Carrie Vaughan I really enjoyed this story I thought it was very sweet it was a story about two races um, alien races I think who had fought a war one of who was telepathic and one of who wasn't and it was basically this was after this peace treaty had basically been signed and a nurse from the non-telepathic species who had been a nurse in a prisoner of war camp and then a prisoner in another prisoner of war camp was in their the telepathic races um city in order to visit one of its soldiers who she knew from both of those camps and finish their chess game um yeah it was it was quite sweet and quite hopeful and i really liked it and then, of course, I read A Fist of Permutations in Lightning and Wildflowers by Alyssa Wong. This short story, again, I don't think it was really my thing. It seemed it was a bit of a time traveling one. And it was about sisters and trying to change time and trying to change an outcome. And no matter how many times you try and change it, it couldn't be changed and the world was still ending. Um, it was interesting and it was very well written. But again, I don't really think it was my thing. And then the last few books that I finished during the month of May were rereads. I finally finished my reread of Emma by Jane Austen, which, you know, it's sweet and lovely and Emma is adorable and silly and I just love it. So, you know, instant, you know me and Jane Austen. Um, but yeah, so that was Emma by Jane Austen, um, which is, of course, a story of, you know, matchmaking and shenanigans basically so and has pretty much my favorite uh Jane Austen hero I you know I think if I was going to marry any Jane Austen hero it would be Mr Knightley so there was that and then while I should have been doing some more Hugo reading um I have actually started one book but so many of the, my friends have been talking about the new Netflix series Anne with an E, which I don't think I'm going to watch because I've never actually watched an Anne of Green Gables adaptation. But I haven't quite decided yet. But so many people were talking about it that I had to go and reread some Anne. So I reread Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea. 
um, which are the first two books in the Anne, Anne series, which is eight books long. And I'm continuing on with, with rereading them at the moment. I'm rereading Anne of the Island. But yeah, so I love these stories. I have, I didn't read them as a child. I read Anne of Green Gables probably in my early, early teens or mid teens um, and enjoyed it, but only got halfway through Anne of Avonlea before giving up. And then when I was a little bit older, sort of, I guess, late teens, early 20s, I started rereading them and fell in love with the entire series. Um, so, yeah, I love the Anne books. I love Anne. I love Gilbert. I love Diana. I love Marilla. Um, yeah, so Anne of Green Gables is, of course, the story of a young orphan girl in Canada who gets adopted by... A pair, an old pair of siblings, um, Matthew and Marilla, who live at Green Gables. She wasn't supposed to be adopted. They wanted a boy to help around the farm and Anne was picked instead. But she's a girl with an imagination who has all sorts of interesting scrapes um, and learns to love the people around her and the people around her fall in love with her. And it's basically her domestic and educational adventures, um, which goes all the way, the series goes all the way until the last book, which is about her daughter. Her youngest daughter but um yeah so that was the last two things that i read in may and so that was 10 things read in may which was a very good reading month oops and that's it so i i'm not sure whether i will have time to film a video during the week um to upload um but yeah i will definitely see you when i get back from continuum in melbourne Hopefully with a bit of a vlog. We'll see how I go. Bye.